Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. What is a sin tax? Ever heard about a sin tax? Now, syntax is not a biblical term. In common usage, syntax is a rather facetious name for a special tax which is levied against things considered sinful or harmful to society in some way. Taxes on tobacco products, beer, liquor, gambling, and most recently legalized pot are considered sin taxes. And a sin tax can be an effort on the part of a governmental body to curb certain behaviors that are deemed to be dangerous or detrimental to the individual or society by making the cost of the products or services extraordinarily high. For instance, on average, almost half of the cost of a pack of cigarettes is due to taxes by certain Uh, taxing certain products and activities heavily, it is hoped that usage and participation will be deterred. The sin tax is an alternative to outright banning of certain activities and products or punishing or fining people for indulging in them. And a more cynical view is that uh, a sin tax is simply a way for the government to boost its revenue People are going to indulge in these harmful behaviors, especially when they are addicted to a substance and the government has uh, chosen to profit from it. And in this view, government leaders are not really trying to curb behavior for then they would lose tax money. They have come to rely on the taxes generated so they are knowingly taking advantage of people who may be caught in a web of addiction. Alcohol and tobacco products are historically the most common things targeted by a sin tax. Other products and activities that may have sin taxes levied against them are gambling, pornography and marijuana. And some jurisdictions also passing the laws to levy sin taxes on sweets, soft drinks and fast foods. Certain vehicles that consume uh, large amounts of gasoline are also becoming targets of extra taxes, perhaps due to a belief that fossil fuel consumption is a moral issue. And many of these things that are the targets of sin taxes are no doubt unhealthy, and uh, a reduction in their use would be a good thing. However, critics argue that In reality, sin taxes do not reduce consumption, but instead they place an undue burden on the poor. And they argue that the people will use these products, especially cigarettes and alcoholic drinks, regardless of the cost. And that the rich can easily afford them while the poor can't. Sin taxes illustrate the difficulty of trying to change and regulate behavior externally. There is no doubt that uh, some form of external control is necessary to keep sinful actions in check. However, a true free society can only operate when there is common agreement on what constitutes moral behavior and an equally common determination to act morally. At one time, there was a consensus in the United States about basic standards of right and wrong. Even when people violated those standards, they still could agree in principle that what they did was wrong. And this consensus was based on what has been uh, called uh, the Judeo-Christian ethnic or ethic, sorry, which simply means an ethic based on uh, the teachings of the Old and New Testament. And the Judeo-Christian ethic was partially external but also to some degree internal as most citizens were indoctrinated in it 
and uh, social uh, pressure was largely pushing people in the right direction. Today, that Judeo-Christian consensus has been eroded and there is no agreement on even the most basic questions of right and wrong or even truth and falsehood. Perhaps the current situation reveals a weakness inherent in a free society not comprom- uh, co- comprised of people who have been born again by the Spirit of God. And even a return to the Judeo-Christian consensus of, a past, of the past will not solve the basic sin problem, which is really a heart problem. Sin is a heart problem. It's not really about the taxes. While such a society would no doubt be a better place to live, individuals would still be as sinful on the inside just as they, guilt, as they are guilt before God. Certainly, Israel in the Old Testament had some heavy external regulations, yet sin was still rampant. That is why God told Jeremiah about a new covenant that he wouldn't act. He told him, and I quote, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. And no longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest declares the Lord for I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more end of quote friends as we conclude we understand that laws and taxes are partially effective external restraints on sin But God's plan to restrain sin is to change people internally so that they will want to live in a way that that is moral and is just. Jesus came to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 9.26, he tells us, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And under the new covenant, sin is taken away. People can be forgiven of their sins and have their hearts changed so that they want to please God as they live in the power of the Holy Spirit. You see the point? And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something. And remember, you can always uh, download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't uh, forget to favorite our podcast or subscribe to our channel that is uh, Keith Milwaukee so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study question. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step order of salvation, that is uh, how to be saved so that you can well preach to a friend or family, or maybe you feel led to support our ministry, please f- visit our website, uh, keithmuoki.com. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.